Nestled on a hillside in rural Toshigi, three hours north of Tokyo, is a training center unlike any other in Japan. It is called the Asian Rural Institute. ARI's roots are in the rural ministry program at Surakawa Theological Seminary. But by the 1970s, key staff had become convinced the needs were greater than seminary training alone could address. I felt that the, the needs in Asia and Africa especially uh, were growing greater, not only for food production, but also for sharing of human concerns. Mm -hmm. And we felt that the churches in Japan ought to respond to those needs. So in 1973, they took the risk and created ARI. Christian in inspiration, ecumenical in practice, it is firmly rooted in the spirit of Jesus, who came as one that serves. Every year, some 30 rural community leaders from across the Asia-Africa-Pacific region come to ARI for a nine-month live-in program, learning the skills of community self-help and development. ARI's primary focus is those millions of impoverished rural people who have been and are being increasingly marginalized by the world's industrial global economy. Their problems are many and basic. Lack of transportation, education, services, opportunity, money. Pesticides. Herbicides, chemical fertilizers, those tools of the so-called green revolution have trapped many third world farmers in a vicious cycle. Those that do manage to engage in the global marketplace find themselves at the mercy of market forces over which they have little control. We talk about self-sufficiency because it's one of the things that we hope to train people in so that they don't look to somebody else to solve their problems. And that's one main reason why we raise 90% of our own food, to prove that it's possible to do that kind of thing. At ARI, participants are able to experiment with production techniques that will best work in their home situations. I want to have a small research about this broiler farm. I want to try with available food in Sri Lanka for third world countries, because uh, here I tried with four pens. I gave uh, four kinds of feed. I tried other pens with soybean. It's available in Sri Lanka. And some rice bran. Most of the people, they buy the commercial feed. So I can make uh, feed myself cheaper way. Max Alvarez's project was to discover how biogas from animal waste might provide fuel for his Philippine villagers. There is an inlet here where we put the where we put the materials, that's manure, pig manure, chicken manure, a cow dung, you know, we also use here. And uh, uh, we just put them there and uh, wait for it to decompose and uh, it could produce gas. It's so simple. Yeah? And they can build it themselves, because I can even build it myself. <laughs> Other participants discover how to turn used cooking oil into clean, burning biodiesel vehicle fuel. Still others have experimented with traditional well drilling techniques to provide water for their home villages, or learned to generate electricity using windmills and old bicycle parts. This is the One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two. This is one of the most important things they gain here is possibilities. Open your mind to the whole world and what might be possible. And then they can figure out how to implement it. <laughs> 